Okay, well, the machinery tells me that we're functioning and we are live with Break the Cage Now, our Saturday morning hangout we've been doing for a long time. Today, we're starting a new series for the next X weeks, five weeks. And I've got a special guest with me today who's a business explosion expert coming to me from the moon or almost somewhere around Toronto, the beautiful city of Sarnia, Ontario, uh, Glenn Dietzel. Good morning, Glenn. Good morning, Kellen, and uh, welcome to all of uh, you that are from all around the world here today. Really look forward to our 30 minutes together. So <clears throat> today uh, starts, like I said, a new series on something that I called FUP, F-U-P, FUP, the albatross of modern business. Now, FUP, of course, is not a word. It is uh, an acronym that stands for uh, some things that I notice and uh, that Glenn and I are going to talk about today that are getting in the way of people's success, particularly business success, uh, fear, uncertainty, and procrastination. The world, the economy, and all kinds of things are changing. We've got three points that we're going to cover today. But before I start on any of them, I uh, just want to give uh, Glenn a chance to make some opening remarks about those things. Glenn, what have you got to think about for our listeners about that? Well, I like um, I like the acronym, uh, Kellen. Uh, I, I like it a lot because I think it reflects the three tenses of reality. Uh, if you look at fear of failure, that's usually a kind of rooted in the past, I would, from my perspective. And then certainly the uncertainty about the future, uh, by definition, reflects the tense or the future. And then the area of procrastination is something that I believe plagues everybody at some level. And that's certainly a very present reality. Cool. So we're going to cover past, present, and future. And this is not Scrooge or the ghost of any Christmas anywhere. This, <laughs> these are the realities of modern business uh, that also affect us past, present, and future. So <clears throat> uh, without messing around, since we've only got 30 minutes, I'm going to jump into the first point. So the first point I wrote down is this is not your father's Oldsmobile. There's a, a car manufacturer that had this commercial Oldsmobile that was part of the General Motors um, monstrous lineup of cars before they had their you know financial implosion and reinvention um and one of the one of the commercials talked about this was not your father's oldsmobile and they did that because they were aiming at a younger demographic so oldsmobile used to have the kind of reputation of being car for geezers old people kind of boats you know big floaty kind of big cars and anything but sporty lively and cool and so when they realized that they're marketing sucked and they weren't selling cars they wanted to go after a younger demographic and they said this is not your father's Oldsmobile so I picked that as the first one just because I'm trying to recognize the changing the, the rapid and enormous changes that are taking place and the fact that you have to make a realization that this is not your father's Oldsmobile this is not business as usual Glenn when I say this is not your father's Oldsmobile when you read that and listeners as you know, those of you that have watched me, there are no preparations. Glenn and I didn't get together and have a secret agenda meeting. This is just a couple of experts talking about this stuff. So when I say this is not your father's Oldsmobile, what came to mind for you? I think uh, most people in life and business, and I think life and business parallel each other almost perfectly. You know, most people that are in business or are starting a business expect business to be some kind of dream, some kind of fantasy. A lot of people start in business or they kind of get motivated to, to grow their business through uh, programs that they listen to. And, and I'm all about personal development, hear me correctly, but at the end of the day, we all need to take the right kinds of action. And so uh, GM, which my father purchased GM products for many years, um, has made a, uh, I believe, a good marketing message because uh, it reflects the realities of really the quantum leaps and changes that have gone on in the business world over just even over the last few months and definitely over the last year or so. And, and for all of us that uh, want to either start or grow our businesses in the fastest way possible, we need to really make sure that we're not rooted in and what has held us back to this point or what is if we've had um, success, we take a look at and don't chain ourselves to the success that we've created. We want to make sure we anchor the right components that have brought us success, but 
brands evolve and they have to evolve. Uh, personal brands have to evolve. Your brand, my brand constantly has to evolve and it has to be rooted in market feedback data. And GM has learned that, uh, albeit I believe the hard way, uh, but just having been to a Detroit Tigers game last night, Kellen, and just observing right in heart, downtown Detroit, some pretty cool GM products that have some pretty hip looking guys with the music uh, cranked and uh, touring down Woodward Avenue, et cetera. So um, I think GM's doing something right. And I think uh, what we're gonna be covering here is gonna really help people really break the cage uh, and create some really powerful breakthroughs in their own lives. Cool, so uh, thank you for that. Uh, no, I didn't go to the Detroit Tigers game with you, but I do know that the Detroit you know, the city had bankruptcy and a long time you drove through Detroit, it was looked like a bombed out city. And I had a yeah. friend that did a million real estate flips there and made a bunch of money, but they have now emerged from bankruptcy and they are moving forward, which is really cool. So the idea that this is not your father's anything or rooted in the past means you have to pay attention to the present. You have to be looking toward the future. You have to so here's the point, grab the things that made you successful, understand what they were, see if they are applicable to the future and the changes in the marketplace, customer demand, customer desires, and your own capabilities. Evolve your capabilities, evolve your brand, pay attention to evolving customer needs, wants, and fantasies and desires for the future, and then stay hip to that and be focused on creating that value. So that's kind of the point of thinking about uh, with that that first bullet of it's not it's not what it was it's what it's becoming that matters for your business. So if you're taking notes right now, take a note to yourself about two things that you can think of that have brought you success in the past, and then two things with those either the same two or an adjustment of those two that you think move you or will move you or could move you solidly in the future so that this concept uh, has value for you the next the next um, point I'm looking at the time because I want to make sure we space this well uh, the next uh, point is to talk specifically about the changes. So I labeled this point FUP and the changing economy. So fear, uncertainty, and procrastination with respect to the changing economy. And I want to, first of all, uh, Glenn and I are going to list and discuss some of the things that are changing in the economy. Uh, and everybody knows, you know, we've had the crash and the recession recovery and it's sloppy and slow some and fast and some and all that sort of thing. And the oil boom and now the, you know, bust and all of that stuff happening is just a you know, fraction of the number of things that are happening. But these changes all drive both business trends and fear, uncertainty and procrastination because of our ability to understand and assimilate these things. So Glenn, why don't you list, I don't know, two, three, four things that you think have changed and are changing in the economy in the last, I don't wanna to go too far back, year, maybe two, and even in the last few months that you think are driving or will drive um, the needs that we have to pay attention to as businesses and tie it into fear, uncertainty, and procrastination. Yeah, sure, uh, Kellen, and thank you for that question. Uh, it's a great question. Uh, and, um, and one of the reasons why I think Kellen um, is asking this question, if you listen carefully to the kinds of questions that he's asking or the observations that he's making. And by the way, he's told you to write things down. And uh, one of our speed to market principles is writing is the doing part of thinking. So you definitely want to take notes. Um, I, I take that. I like the power of three. Um, so I'll provide three powerful trends that I see my own humble opinion. Uh, and we, we're kind of privy to a lot of what's going on because of uh, Lifestyle Entrepreneur Magazine. And we've got several thousand people that come to us each week that we vet um, as candidates for the magazine. So we're privy to a lot of different industries, a lot of data that's going on. One of the things that I would really recommend, and I know Kellen does this very effectively, and uh, leaders uh, in industries today really need to understand the sociological trends that are going on in today's market. And it is about... Um, knowing how to organize yourself and your company to be able to attract not just B to C business to customer or business to client relationships, but B to B business to business. 
And uh, I see a lot of entrepreneurs today trying to put all their money in the online world, especially if you're a coach, a consultant, trainer, an expert, a speaker. And a lot of people kind of almost live their lives like dependent on the online world. And uh, today's most successful entrepreneurs have to, I believe, have a uh, dual um, marketing role, both online and offline. And it's really important to be able to tap into a lot of your leverage that you have in the offline world. Bring people from the online world offline. That's crucial because the online world is just one mass of overwhelm. And that's something that I've just seen, especially Kellen over the last a uh, couple of years, I see it accelerating. You know, if we go to LinkedIn, we go to Amazon, just take a look at the number of competitors that we all have in our industries. It's increasing exponentially today. So the companies that are gonna win, I really believe are the ones that are gonna be able to take people from the online world offline and then bring them from the offline world back online, kind of like what Callum's doing right now with Google Hangouts. So that leads to the second tech trend, which I see as uh, a technological trend. There, there's a lot of tech trends going on. I was looking at, reading the business section of the Globe and Mail, which is our national, one of our national newspapers here in Canada, if you haven't noticed the accent. And uh, the feature article in the business section here uh, was uh, digital media and how companies are allocating funds and how this has just been revolutionizing how big corporations do their marketing and their ad spends uh, today. So that is a huge um, trend that's affecting all small business owners, whether you're in startup, or whether you are at some level of, uh, of business growth uh, uh, or size. And that would be the second trend that you definitely want to tap into. The third one, what I would call is an economic trend. And what I see here today is making sure that uh, as you reflect on the past, in the present, for the future, uh, it's what I would organize the three tenses of how you want to uh, take a look at reality, life, and business. Uh, but having an economy of scale for what it is that you do is really important because people want to be around where there's momentum. And it's almost like in today's market, Kellen, it's sort of like, you know, there's a lot of different experts. And if you just took a sheet of paper, whether it's uh, in landscape mode or regular, you just drew, uh, you know, a hundred circles and those all represent business owners, experts, speakers, however you wanted to find them. But you know, the entrepreneurial business world, and it's really today the, the, the company that can draw the biggest circle that encapsulates most of those circles. And so uh, you want to think as a business owner and as a life principle that you have a really powerful organizing principle that naturally attracts momentum and attention for what it is that you're doing. So let's talk about a couple of specific examples. Um, Joy, my wife, has been an online marketer for uh, more than 10 years, uh, principally focusing, focusing on antiques, collectibles, and stuff like that on eBay. So recently, uh, we saw eBay spin off PayPal. Uh, PayPal is one of the biggest, if not the biggest, I don't know, but one of the biggest online financial things. But eBay spinning them off, and then if you've watched eBay's fortunes and um, their positioning in the market over the last several years, they're, they're losing it. And it's interesting because a few years ago, um, th probably four years ago, I told Joy and I had a conversation and I told her, eBay isn't going to stay the big game in town. It isn't going to be the big dog. It's going to lose it. It's going to get crushed by somebody. And I made some predictions about who it was and what would happen. And they've come true. But it, that's not the point. The point is things change. And so even something that a few years ago seemed simply dominant and these other little piddly, you know, Etsy's and all these other things seemed irrelevant compared to the monster of eBay. Well, you know, Amazon comes along and recently Shopify with their IPO, which wildly exceeded expectations and Alibaba in China and all of these places have simply eroded and, and undercut, frankly, eBay's uh, dominance and preeminence their own policies, and here is a key, their calcification, their mm -hmm. inability to reflect and react, to research, reflect, and react to customer needs and trends cause them to be like a you know, sort of a lumbering giant whose bones had calcified, and somebody you know brought up the chisels, and, and pretty soon, boom, you know, here they go. So they've spun off PayPal because that's enormously profitable. It's a separate company now. And eBay is going to slug it out now 
with the growing competitors. Another interesting piece with that is Amazon sort of rose up and was giving Walmart and all the box stores all of this competition. And now with Alibaba and Shopify, Amazon's not, you know, the de facto king of anything either. And the same principles of calcification, lack of flexibility, fluidity, and agility are causing the, the corporations that tend to get large to forget how they got where they are and to fall on their face. Plop either slowly, which is sort of sad to watch, or quickly. Uh, and so, which is sad to watch also, but at least it's over quicker. <laughs> if you think about the technology trends that Glenn talked about, when I, 20 years ago, there was a new thing in town. Man, it was new, and it was called a VCR. And it was in the 80s, so okay, 30 years ago. So I'm, I'm getting older than I thought, whatever. But in 20 years, you saw an entire industry be born, rise, die, evaporate, and now, you know, video stores on the street corner are a thing of the past. You saw an entire industry be created, flourish, make people billions of dollars, and vanish in I don't know, a couple of decades. So that's the speed at which these things change, and not paying attention to those principles in your own business is death. And so that's a couple of examples that I wanted to sort of talk about uh, in, in light of that. So Glenn, I have another question um, for you. In, in thinking about the trends that you talked about, um, sociological, economic, and technology trends, can you, can you think of a couple of maybe specific examples, maybe clients, maybe just industries that you know about, and technology trends, or economic or sociological, that are driving the need that drive the need for us as business owners to pay closer attention to collect better market data, pay attention to understand, interpret it correctly, and sort of stay in front of, at least equal to, but hopefully in front of emerging trends in the marketplace in order to thrive as a business. Are you asking me, Kellen, for clarity? Are you asking me for companies that I think are at the cutting edge that help entrepreneurs with that? Um, you can answer it that way if you like. I just wanted you to talk about the need and the reality of gathering the right data and staying abreast of or in front of emerging market trends so you can serve your customers oh, well and not yeah. get crushed. Not get let, me, let me take that angle uh, because I see a lot of entrepreneurs today really, really struggling more than ever. Um, but I recommend that all of you write this down. Split focus is why we lose. Split focus is why we lose. And in today's market with, especially in the online world where there's just so many different areas uh, that you need to be aware of, it's simply almost overwhelming uh, in terms of where to focus, how to execute, and uh, and if you bring into that a certain presupposition about business success uh, that you carry over from conversations that you've had and the way that you approach your past, and most entrepreneurs, I really believe, approach their past incorrectly, and they don't let go of their past, especially their past failures, and somehow they're, that is intertwined with the present conversations that they have uh, in today's market. So. Uh, in, in terms of a uh, first technological trend that I believe that all of us should appropriate, I believe is a uh, one of the mind. Uh, understanding that first of all, you wanna focus on the past and you wanna take a look at your past in terms of what you've learned from the past because that's really where your genius lies and your most valuable advice uh, is, is going to be worth the most uh, in today's market because mar the marketplace is about specialized knowledge and skills and and what you've learned through the school of hard knocks. And, and then secondly, really focusing and zeroing on them the present and using a better way of focusing and a better way of executing uh, in today's market. And because there are so many things that we can be focusing on, right? There's G plus. There are, you know, getting, uh, using tools like Talent using and we're using right now, you know, Google Hangouts. There is tools like LinkedIn, there's Facebook ads, and the list goes on and on and on in terms of what every entrepreneur at some level uh, shape, uh, should be using or implementing within their business. But in order to uh, simplify, and this is just a principle that I use, uh, Kellen, that has worked very well for me over the years, is 
looking at all of these things that we could be doing, especially in the online world, are just a lot of different marketing tentacles. Uh, and looking at how you can really get your message out in the most powerful way as quickly as possible. And uh, that's where I believe that there are a few areas that we should just really be focusing on in business, build the kind of cash flow or the uh, ability to be able to invest back in our business to have, you know, have systems or invest in systems that will allow you to take away a lot of these um, marketing venues or avenues that, uh, that companies use in today's market. So um, I hope I answered that question properly. I believe that if you focus on the past in the present properly, then understanding the power of the future. And most people, I think, Kellen, they focus on the past and they're focusing on the future and it's leading to total overwhelm. They're seeing you know, what they haven't done, haven't been able to do, uh, or and they've inculcated other messages from their past. They're looking at the future, they feel overwhelmed about it. And is there any reason why in the present, uh, they're either in a total state of overwhelm, overthinking, procrastination, indecision, hesitation, and the list goes on and on and on why most people, I believe, get stuck in today's, uh, into, given the realities of, of, the, of the business world in which we live today. So, yeah, that's fine. I, I, I think about the past this way. It's good for two things. The past yesterday is good for two things. It tells you where you start today is the first thing. That's sort of obvious and it almost sounds silly, but I can't tell you the number of people that stumble because they pretend they're taking a step from where they're not. Mm -hmm. and you can't take a step from where you're not to somewhere else. You have to start where you are. The second thing the past is good for is to teach you some lessons, if you're willing to learn, which is what you were talking about. So you've learned the lessons from the past, and you start where you are, where you left off. And if you take that message into the present, then it does exactly what you said. You learn the things that worked, and so forth. The other thing is uh, all of the tools that we get buried by. You, mean, you listed a bunch of them, online, offline. Oh, can I go speak? Can I do this, that, the other? Answer a basic question, you know, what is it that you stand for and what's the value that you bring and to what audience? And then figuring out what the best way to reach that audience, that drives your decision about tools. And so getting focused on all the noise um, that people make about the possibilities of different tools is exactly what you said, Glenn. It's just very overwhelming, it's confusing, and drives us to uh, complete distraction where if we back up and focus simply on what we do what you called your genius what you do who, who are you what is exactly what it is the crux the kernel the power and how do you get that to the right audience okay which is the tool that does that a screwdriver a wrench a hammer we name some social media, but I'll just call them tools. That drives much better decisions about which one to use than to get all caught up in the hype about who used which tool to do what on some day on some project and some launch and made however much money they claim to have made. And so that's exactly, um, you, you answered it exactly right, and I would just add or, or discuss it in, in that way. Given where we are on time, we have one more point to cover. So let's jump into the third one. So the third one I, I called uh, strapping in for the ride. <laughs> and I, I named it that because, you know, when you go on a roller coaster or other thrill ride, you know, straight up, straight down, upside down, backwards, whatever it is at the amusement parks, more and more dangerous with more and more G's and more and more, you know, awesome vomit your lunch up you know, <laughs> on, the, on the past guy or the guy behind right. you kind of ride, they strap you in tighter and tighter because the ride is more and more, you know, dangerous and, and you know, exciting. I kind of think business is like that. It's fun. It's thrilling uh, to think about the number of people you can reach, the impact you can have, the money you can make. And so strapping in for the ride is important. But the way I'm thinking of strapping in for the ride is you you are strapped in close and tight to your mission, your vision, what you do, your execution, and you have to stay there and not get distracted by the thrill of the crowd. This, and I'm using the ride analogy, the screaming people in the other cars and the ground or sky rushing up at you, but you stay sort of strapped in close to your core 
principles and the things that you learn from the market. So that's kind of the analogy I was using. And when I wrote down strap in for the ride, you laughed. What uh, what went through your mind with that, Glenn? Well, I just see, um, I see most people trapped in, I guess, what I would refer to as kind of a bifurcation of reality. You know, people want to go on this journey, right? I mean, that's why we, that's what gets us excited about entrepreneurship uh, in the first place, about business, is about a journey. And, and I believe to be fully human and fully engaged in who we are, as you mentioned, your vision, your, your mission, you need to be, it needs to, you need to be on a journey, if you will, that's going to take you where you want to go and not held back by a model, for example, like I was for 14 years with a T4 slip here in Canada or a W2 in the US or wherever you are in the world. If you have a job or trying to get out of that job, that to a certain extent uh, really can decimate our dreams because the longer we stay trapped in that model, we can't ever really get on the ride and, and strap ourselves in and say, you know what? I, I'm going to do this. So one of the one of the things that, and, and I, I laugh too because I thought I got to this place, Kellen, when I had my job. I was a young vice principal uh, with a public school board, and I, I came to what I believe that everybody needs to, and that comes that, that's the proverbial fork in the road. And I believe that in the only way to totally get on the roller coaster ride and strap yourself in is to understand when you're at that fork in the road and you look at the pain and the frustration of continuing to go the way that you have been going and it maybe has been a route in business that's becoming more and more exasperating for you or it could be that you are in a job trying to get into business and you got to feel the pain of, of of being held by that model because if that pain does not supersede the pain of moving forward within a complete new reality and we can use the gm example again i mean if if the end of the day, if profits uh, were not decimating GM, that pain of you know continuing to do what they were doing would not uh, override the pain of moving forward in a new direction or a launch of a of new branding and and a model update. So when we hit that proverbial fork in the road, the pain of moving or staying where where we are or in the way we've been going has to supersede the pain of moving forward because if it doesn't we're all going to at some level yes maybe we have half of our body on the roller coaster and all of you can realize that if you're not fully locked into a roller coaster you got half of your body on half of your body off um, good things aren't going to happen and that's the problem I believe with with most people today and and to your point Kellen we see all this stuff happening online this person is doing this and this person's recommending this and this and this and people think oh, I gotta do this I gotta do this I gotta do this I gotta do this and at the end of the day, they forget that all business, all life is about generating newer and faster conversations. And I see so many people today more busy uh, than I've ever seen them, but they're really not focusing on what, what I would, it's just if I look at my own self uh, and my own business and, and with my clients really looking at what they really need to be working, looking at for success, and that's generating newer and faster conversations in the market, which means not hiding behind an email, not hiding behind uh, a text message, but literally talking to candidates for your programs, talking to strategic alliance, alliance partners uh, about your programs and services. And at the end of the day, that's really where business happens uh, in today's marketplace that really de demands that kind of high touch because we live in a service-based economy and because so many things have become so automated and that people are pretty cynical and jaded today when they see a lot of companies um, just really, you know, as they kind of look a little bit deeper, it's, it's not really um, engaging. So uh, a couple of notes then, go on that journey, as Kellen said, and use the analogy of the roller coaster ride, it's all in, or you might as well not even try to go uh, partially, in, partially in, because it's not going to bring you uh, anywhere near the, the results that you want. It's all in, uh, and it's making sure that at the end of the day, and this is just one of my criteria, I look at the conversations that I've had over the past day or the past 48 hours, 72 hours last week, and I can gauge the growth of my company strictly based on conversations, not anything else. All those other tools and stuff, some of the, what we just mentioned, it's just one, it's just, that's, it's there just to build conversations, but we can all grow our companies quickly. So I've got it. We're, we're just about to the end of our time here. Uh, 
Those are great points. So everybody take away the fact that you absolutely are going to get to a fork in the road. And if you stand there very long, you're going to get forked. We have talked today about fear, uncertainty, and procrastination and set the stage for another series of four hangouts. So for the next four Saturdays, we're going to talk about them one at a time. Fear, what it looks like, what it does to you, and so forth. And uncertainty, what it looks like, what it does to you, and what to do about it. Procrastination, the same thing. And then the fifth week is going to be sort of a, a global uh, plan about moving forward. And Glenn and I will be conducting those over the next uh, four weeks. I want to invite you to get a hold of Glenn if you like. His stuff's on the screen, so is mine. If you want to further this conversation and move yourself ahead in a way faster than you think is possible right now, there are those around who can help you. Glenn's one, I'm one, there's lots of others as well. But the point is you have to decide who you are, what you stand for, and what you're willing to do to make it happen. Because half on and half off is obviously going to split rip you in half as the roller coaster goes up. Not a pretty thought. Thank you all for joining us today for Break the Cage Now. And I want to encourage you both to go back and watch this, share it if you like, and come join us again next week where Glenn and I talk about fear, uncertainty, and procrastination, the albatross of modern business, how to get that albatross off your neck, blast off to your next level, and make a lot of money and have a lot of fun. Glenn, thank you for joining me today. Thanks, Callan. We'll see you later, folks.